try and explain this in the most easiest way to understand. Like, you know, I'm gonna make it super, super easy. Like, I don't wanna start using technical terms with you because one, that's just not me, to be honest. And two, we just want easy stuff, easy to understand tutorials, right? Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, which is all about beauty. Today is the Beauty 101 on basic makeup brushes. So everything you need to know about the basic brushes that you would need. I've answered questions that you guys have sent in, like, do you really need to use expensive makeup brushes? What are the best affordable makeup brush brands? And what brush would I need for my eyes, for blending, for my face? Everything that you need to know is in this video. Don't forget, I do have a Makeup 101 series where you can catch the other videos, which is on the 101 playlist on my channel or in the description below. As always, if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. You can also catch me on Instagram where you can follow my stories or my posts for daily beauty news. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so we're gonna be talking all about brushes in this video. As this is the Makeup 101 series, you probably know that I have several other videos within this, within this series which are all listed in my description box below, so please do head over there to watch those as well. But you guys have been sending in a lot of questions about brushes, so let's kick off this video with the first question. I'm not gonna say that they are so important, but what I will say is, it is the type of tool that we would probably use the most as opposed to any other kind of tool. Like I think most of us would probably use brushes as opposed to fingers or maybe even sponges with some people. But the importance of makeup brushes is really the precision that you get from them. And that's why you have so many different types of shapes and sizes of brushes and texture of brushes uh, because it, it makes a difference on how it applies onto the skin, how the makeup applies onto the skin. So brushes are in important or kind of important because it helps you to apply makeup and it helps you to get that nice precision and that even finish. So it doesn't mean you can't use other things. You can use your fingers, you can use sponges if you want, or you can mix it all up together and use a bit of everything. But some of the brushes are important because of the type of, or the, the kind of precision of application that it can give us. For concealer application, it doesn't mean that you have to use a brush. Like for example, I, you'll probably see in most of my videos, I actually use the tip and it depends on the type of concealer you use as well. And I use the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. So it already has like a, oh, there's a lot of concealer that came out with that. It already, already has like a, a uh, is it called like a felt? Is it felt? It's like a spongy felt tip. So I use that. And most concealer tips like this, that are not in a pot, they have good, they have good tips that you can actually apply it with. So I usually apply it like that, that's it. But if I'm using another concealer, which is maybe like a concealer palette, then I would use a concealer brush. And the type of brush that you want is something where the hair is quite dense. It's quite kind of stuck together. I'm gonna to try and explain this in the most easiest way to understand. Like, you know, I'm gonna make it super, super easy. Like, I don't wanna start using technical terms with you because one, that's just not me, to be honest. And two, we just want easy stuff, easy to understand tutorials, right? The brush, the hair should be quite compact together and it's a flat brush. The brush would be quite flat and quite like a, you can get different sizes, but like something like this is quite good. This is the Kevin O'Quar Duet Concealer Brush. So I would most of the time, to be honest, I don't use that other side, but I use the flat side. So ultimately this is the kind of brush that you would want, something which is flat, it's a medium kind of shape, so it kind of is small enough to get into the inner corner on the under eye area, but also kind of a decent size to be able to spread the concealer across and apply that wherever you want. That's if you want to apply your concealer like on your under eye. If you spot, spot conceal, and what that means is when you use a much smaller style concealer brush, so it's basically like half the size of this, but it's still flat and a condensed brush, then you can use that for kind of just adding concealer onto spots or blemishes if that that's your style of uh, applying concealer. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't like saying to you guys, and you've probably heard me say this before, you need to go out and get a concealer brush, you need to go out and buy a eyeliner brush, you need to go out and buy a bronzer brush. I don't care what it says it's for. I care about what the actual brush is like and how it works. For example, like I just said to you about this concealer brush, this is an actual concealer brush. Most concealer brushes look like this, right? As I said a minute ago, you can also have a smaller version of that, which is for kind of spot concealing, which is where you're, it's very precise concealer application where you're just applying it on smaller areas, you know, and you're not 
necessarily doing on the whole under eye like I do. That's how some people will spot conceal. They'll, they'll only conceal in that way. And in which case, I then like to use something like this. It's, a, it's actually a lip definer, but I only use it for kind of small conceal application. I don't use that method myself, but what I do like to, to use this for is to apply concealer onto it and just clean up any areas that I may, may have kind of messed up on, like the end of the uh, eyeliner, or maybe my brow needs to be cleaned up. So you could also use this for spot concealing. So this is a, it's a 329 lip definer brush from Zoeva, but it is perfect for concealer because of, because of how close together the bristles are and how flat it stays, it's amazing for that. There are various different brushes that you could use for foundation. You've got your traditional foundation brush, which is basically just a giant size concealer brush. It's just an extra, it's like much bigger than a concealer brush, but it's in the same shape and it's kind of compact bristles together. So it stays flat. And you can basically use that for your foundation if you want. You can kind of like, it's more or less, you're more or less paint, painting it on, but you do have other versions which are much better than that now. For example, you have a kind of like stipple brush, which you can kind of like buff into the skin. And you also then have special kind of like dedicated foundation brushes, which are more kind of like compact, but it's kind of like bigger surface area than a traditional foundation brush. So that you can kind of like really buff into the skin. I always prefer, if you're gonna use a foundation brush, you Use something which has a larger surface area, but make sure that it's nice and soft. So it almost kind of like bounces off the skin. So it kind of replicates the type of movement that you could make with an actual sponge. I think that that would be much better for you guys. So something which is quite soft, not too hard, like it shouldn't be too hard there because it's just not really, I feel like you're just kind of, it's just not working. So I feel like you need something kind of soft that it really bounces into the skin and you can get quite larger, you can get various different brush shapes for that now, but that would be the type of brush that kind of sits in well, like really gets hold of, can really buff the foundation into your skin. Okay, so my ultimate favorite under eye brush is the Real Techniques setting brush. This brush is amazing. I feel like if you wanna get any brush, you've gotta get this brush, it's amazing. I keep a few of these around because I just love this brush. The size of it is amazing. It just fits perfectly on the under eye area. This is what I use to dust away any kind of like uh, powder. When I've set my under eye area, I just kind of like dust it away. It's just like perfect. I, I love this brush, honestly go get this brush. By the way, all these links are gonna be in my description box below, so all you need to do is click on the links and it'll take you straight to it. No, you don't. You don't have to use super expensive brushes. Look, I'm gonna be honest, there are so many other types of brushes that are out there which are more for professional use. I have several of them within my kit. That's because I'm a professional makeup artist. But the kind of brushes that I use on myself, they're not the like pro pro brushes, you know, like the really expensive brushes. I use the kind of brushes which are very easily accessible for you guys too. So I have a mixture of brushes. Honestly, if I showed you like there are so many brushes here. The last time I cleaned them was actually a, a week ago now, so I do, they are due for a clean, but I have loads here that are just like brushes that you can go into Sephora and get hold of. There are several brushes which you can use, which are a bit more kind of like affordable. Like Real Techniques is a good brand, I think, because it's not cheap, but it's much cheaper than the, you know, brushes like Fenty or especially Hourglass, Charlotte Tilbury. The brushes from Real Techniques are good. They're like, if you want a good set of brushes, Real Techniques is a good option. Also Zoeva. Zoeva are amazing. I think that they do really good different, like a good variety of different brushes and especially for the eyes as well. So you can get like an eye set or you can get the whole set. If you want, if you want, like, you can get a variety of brushes from brands like that, from Real Techniques, Zoeva, also Sephora own brand brushes are really good as well. There are quite a few uh, Sephora own brand brushes that I use. So I pick the best of each type of brand. I use that, that brush. I don't get the whole set from something, you know, although I do have the whole set from Zoeva, it doesn't mean I actually use every brush from that set. So I would say I try and pick the best from each beauty brand and use those brushes accordingly. So like I just said, same thing, I use a mixture of brushes. Most of them are 
kind of beauty brands that you can get in Sephora. I use a mixture of, I have Makeup Forever, a lot of Makeup Forever brushes. Those brushes are probably closer to the pro makeup range, like makeup brush range, but they're still accessible for you guys because you can get them in Sephora as well and also online. Makeup Forever is one brand that I use. I also use some of the Charlotte Tilbury brushes. The only thing with some of the Charlotte Tilbury brushes is the hairs do come out on the face, which is really annoying. But I, I don't really use their face brushes as much other than the Hollywood complexion brush. I do use that because I love that brush. But I mainly use their kind of like smaller eye brushes. I also have a variety of brushes from Fenty Beauty. I love the Fenty Beauty brushes, they're very good quality. I use Zoeva brushes, which are great quality as well. Again, some of their face brushes leave like the hairs come out, but the eye brushes are impeccable. What other brushes do I have? Hourglass brushes. Oh my God, hourglass brushes are expensive, but some of the best brushes. They are such good quality. And I absolutely love the brushes and they're shaped so well for the face, for the contours of the face. Unfortunately, they are very expensive though, but very, very good. I would highly recommend them. So you're kind of like, you know, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. What other brushes do I have? I'm just looking over at them. I have uh, a lot of Real Techniques. I have a lot of Sephora own brand brushes. I have some Marc Jacobs brushes. Marc Jacobs, oh my God. Marc Jacobs, so nice, so expensive. It just, look at the way that's shaped. It's just shaped perfectly. But then you've got Real Techniques. So I'm showing you the same kind of uh, style brush you've got real techniques and it's still very good very soft you can tell the difference when you look close up in, in the actual in the craft, craftsmanship of the brush but really it's not too much of a difference so there are some brushes like hourglass i think worth every penny very expensive i've not found an, any other brush which is similar to that or as good as that so even some of the more expensive brands are not as good as the hourglass brush so it really depends it's a case of having a look at it don't just go out and buy it you've got to have a look at them and, and uh, compare as well oh i have some six Sigma brushes. I only have a few Sigma brushes because I'm not too keen on their large face brushes, but their small brushes are very good. Um, I use some of their lip brushes on the eyes because they're perfectly shaped for the eyes. Again, like I said, you don't have to use it for what it says it's for. I also have some brushes from Bobbi Brown. Her brushes are really, really good. So th there's a big variety of brushes that I have. Now, as you may already know from previous videos of mine when it comes to eyeshadow application, I like to separate application and blending when it when I'm teaching students or if I'm teaching online, like on YouTube, because I find it's much easier for you guys to actually follow. And eventually, over time, you will learn how to apply and blend at the same time. But I'm not saying that you actually have to. Like you, you may prefer this technique so much better, like just app applying with one brush and blending with the other brush. So you have application brushes and you have blending brushes. Doesn't mean you have to you can apply a blend all at the same time if you want but if you really want to kind of excel in your application and especially your blending of eyeshadow then i would recommend splitting it so that you don't get too overwhelmed in your head with applying and blending your eyeshadow. I'm gonna talk about application brushes and blending brushes because of the fact that that's what I mainly teach on this channel. When it comes to application, it's really about finding brushes which have more of a kind of flat finish to the brush so that it can kind of really work on the surface area on transferring the product onto the surface area of your lid. So a flat brush is always better. Something like the 228 brush from, Make from Makeup Forever is a really good brush for application. It also is slightly round at the end so that it really helps to kind of like make sure that you press it into the socket area as well and get that right nice clean finish. If you apply with a fluffy brush such as this, you're kind of like blending at the same time. So again, like I said, if you want to have separate brushes for application, application I'd always recommend like more of a flat brush because you really application is about transferring the color onto your skin. When you want to blend, that's when you want to go for a brush where the brush is a little bit more fluffy so that it allows you to really kind of like move that product around and blend. Okay, so some good blending brushes. You'll see all three of these brushes, they actually look very similar. They're probably a little bit different in terms of the size of it and a very subtle shape difference. Now, let me talk about this one first. So the Zoeva 228 Luxe Crease Brush. I love this brush for getting right into the crease and kind of like blending. So basically I would like go into the crease here and this really helps me to kind of like blend 
product. So this is great for that area, but again, it depends on the size of your socket as well. So for example, if you have a slightly kind of deeper socket or you find it a much smaller socket, then you can go in with a slightly smaller brush, which is the Pro Precision Crease number 17 Sephora brush, which is a bit thinner. Same shape, but it's a bit thinner. So it really kind of, it gives you a little bit of extra pre precision there. Then you also have the Fenty 230 brush, which is also good for blending. And that also kind of sits in perfectly in the socket line or just generally for blending, it's good. Now, another couple of brushes that I want to show you, which are actually, again, similar similar shape, but they're smaller, it's half the size. So you have the Zoeva 231 brush, it's the Luxe Petite Crease. So this is much smaller. So if you don't really want to disperse that color as much as what these other first brushes would do that I showed you, you can use a smaller brush. It's still a crease brush, it's still a blending brush, but it's slightly smaller. So, and it's a little bit more compact, so it kind of like, it, it doesn't disperse the color as much, but it does blend the area. If you want to have a little bit more control over how far that blending is going, then I would go with something like this, which is a 231 brush. It's, it's really great for a bit more precision blending. Now, another one that you can go for is the 230 brush from Zoeva. And again, this is a little bit smaller. Than, than the one, the previous one that I showed you. So it's again, same shape, but it gives you more precision. So it's a bit more dense, but it has the same shape. So again, even if you want even more precision, like say for example, if you wanna uh, fade out the wing, like an eyeshadow wing, then you can use something like this. If you wanna go even smaller, so even more precision there, you can go with something like the Pro Shader 18 brush from Sephora. Now this is not the same shape as those previous brushes that I showed you. It is good for application or blending. Now this is, it's kind of got the best of both. So it's slightly flat, but it has a nice kind of round finish to it. It also isn't overly dense. It is dense, but it's not overly dense. Not, not as much as it's not as fluffy as the first fluffy fluffy kind of blending brushes that I showed you but it also isn't too compact so you can blend with this as well so this is great for application so you can use the flat part of the brush for application and then you can use the tip tip of the brush to blend get some really really good precision there to kind of blend the uh, edges and if you want to keep it very small if you don't want that color to really spread so much and you just want to blend the edges of a smaller section of eyeshadow then that's great for you really you've got to remember that when you're using brushes there are so many different things that you can do with that brush so don't just think that you have to use one part of the brush you could use the side of a brush which is maybe more flat that gives you great application then you could use the tip to kind of blend if you wanted to use like one brush for application and blending. But it really does depend on the type of brush and what the bristles are like and how kind of sparse they are. They are. So there are a couple of brushes here that I love for eyeliner application. One is the Sigma E06 winged eyeliner brush. This brush is great. I love the shape of this brush and it's great for kind of liquid, uh, sorry, gel eyeliner application. So it's just super, super thin. You can see how small this is and it's just perfect for real kind of thin eyeliner. If you really want to get that precision right and you really want to get that wing nice and perfectly faded at the end, that's a great brush. Another good one is the Bobbi Brown ultra precise eyeliner brush I feel like this brush is kind of like the perfect eyeliner brush because it isn't overly thin some of those super thin eyeliner brushes I feel like after a little while one hair will go rogue and it just ruins the whole you can't use it again because if that one rogue hair touches a bit of eyeliner you've basically got like two lines on your on your eyes so it's just annoying but this is a really good quality eyeliner brush that hasn't ever disappointed me with application and the bristles stay in place as well So for a bronzer brush, as you guys may already know, I use a bronzer in the areas that I would contour because that's just my personal preference. I love adding that sun-kissed look to those areas, but I also like to contour with the bronzer because then I just get the best of both. There is a brush that I would recommend. Unfortunately, it is quite expensive, but it is amazing and it's kind of like it's good for using your bronzer in any area that you want in your face because you've got one side which is the big kind of really nice fluff brush and it's much larger and you can use this in areas larger surface areas to kind of like give that sun kiss look if you use bronzer just for a sun kiss look you know in the obvious areas where the sun hits and you just want that really nice kind of golden sun kiss look then that side of the brush is perfect but what i love is that you can also use this for powder you know if you want to 
dust away powder on your face, like face powder, then that's good as well. Then the other side of the brush is a bit more, it's a different shape, but it's perfect if you wanna really get into the cheekbone area to kind of add that definition there with either a contour powder or even adding your bronzer in that area. So it depends. Plus your face generally might be much smaller than mine. So you have petite features. So you, this would be better as your overall bronzer brush. So this is a great brush because it has, it's dual ended. So it kind of gives you the best of both. A little bit pricey, but well worth the money in my opinion. But then if you want a much cheaper option for a big, for a more kind of sun-kissed look, which isn't dual ended, I don't know of a cheaper brush which is as good as the Hourglass one, I really don't. But if you want a, a, a big kind of dome brush, then I'd go for this Real Techniques 201 brush because it, you know, it's big enough to kind of give you that nice sun-kissed look, but it wouldn't necessarily work if you want to really sculpt the, the cheekbones. But it's, it's good enough for that sun-kissed look. Now for blush, I personally much prefer a stipple brush. The one that I use is the MAC 100 brush. I think someone left me a comment saying that they couldn't find this in MAC, so maybe they've discontinued it, I'm not actually sure. But I'm gonna put the link to an alternative because I think e.l.f. do a similar brush to this, which is really good. And honestly, this the size is great because, and it just is perfect for, for blush. And you know, the reason I prefer a stipple brush for, for blusher is because the brush tip is basically, it consists of much shorter hair, which you can't actually see, which makes it kind of, gives it that nice uh, thickness to the brush from the root. But then you have much longer bristles, which are slightly spread out. So the shorter hairs kind of in the, in the middle, it force the longer hairs to kind of spread, which gives you that really nice kind of dispersed effect. So what happens is when you go into that powder and you go onto your face, you don't get a bulk amount of color. It kind of, the color disperses perfectly. So for color, for blush, it's great because you're not getting bulk amount of color there. It's much easier to blend and you can just buff it into the skin. One of my favorite brushes for highlighter application is the Zoeva 134 Luxe Powder Fusion Brush. This brush is amazing because I feel like it's perfect for like the upper, for the cheekbones when you wanna apply powder or maybe just a little bit on the forehead or the chin. It's not good for the tip of the nose because it's way too big, but I would usually use my finger for something like that and then just dust it off. But this brush is great as a highlighter brush. It's not too big. You can see this, this you can see that the size of this is small enough to be able to just get those kind of key areas without it touching areas that you don't want it to touch so and plus the the kind of the fluffiness of it just ensures you're not getting too much bulk product there and it just lightly kind of touches the parts of the skin on the area that you're going in on If you really want to go for a full brush set, which has more or less everything that you need, the only brand that I would recommend, which isn't overly expensive, isn't, it's not cheap either, but it isn't ridiculously priced. Like if I said to you go out and get the whole set from Makeup Forever, which would be a great set, but it's gonna cost you so much, it's so expensive. I would say the best bet, your best bet is to go for something like Zoeva because I, I can't remember how much it is roughly, but I do remember it is much cheaper than like getting that whole set as opposed to getting a whole set from somewhere else. Like it's much cheaper than other brands, but you are gonna get good quality. Like Zoeva is a good quality uh, brush set, I think, based on my experience from using the brushes. The link will be in the description box below. I'm gonna put in the whole set link so that you can actually see what the whole set is like. The whole set actually comes in this really nice bag, which I've got, it's a makeup bag. And actually so many people have asked me about this makeup bag on my bookings because I, I have a, a couple of them. And it basically, it's like a, it's like a suitcase you can carry it, but it there's three zips on it. So it opens up into, it's like one, two, three. It's like three compartments. So you can fit in like your palettes. You can fit in all your brushes in there if you want to. I use it for all my palettes and keep all my brushes in a separate kit. It comes with a whole brush set. You've got so many brushes in there and you have everything that you would need in it. So I really do hope that answers all of your questions for a basic brush 101 session. So I hope that answers all of the questions that you have about basic makeup brushes and gives you a better understanding about what you need to know when it comes to choosing the right makeup brush for whatever part of the face that you're working on. Now, as always, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.